Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and you're listening to another episode of Catalogs, Manifest, and Metadata. Oh my. And basically, on this podcast, I've talked a lot about like Apache Iceberg and other Apache projects like Apache Parquet and so forth. But the question I sometimes get is, what is Apache? Like a lot of people just kind of like assume it's a thing, um, but they don't really, or they think it's a company or... Um, so in this episode, I'm going to just take a moment and explain sort of a, what Apache is, the, specifically the Apache Software Foundation, why it matters, and a little bit about its history. So essentially, it all starts with a piece of software called Apache. Now, Apache was essentially created out of a group of people who independently said, hey, you know what, there needs to be a better web server than the options at the time. So this is like, I think in the early 90s. Um, you know, so a lot of web technology is not where it is today. So what they did is they created their own web server. So for those uh, um, not familiar, basically the role of the web server is to to essentially direct traffic in a sense. So basically if I were to create like a, a server, uh, it would have an IP address. And basically I can maybe get that IP address matched up to a domain name. And that's the role of domain name service, DNS. It basically is like kind of like a catalog of domains. It's a catalog that says, hey, this domain belongs to this IP address, to keep it simple. Okay. And essentially when that, so basically when someone types in their browser, xyz.com, a request is made. A request is then gets sent to the DNS server. And the DNS server will say, okay, well, you asked for this URL. The domain name belongs to this IP address. It then sends that, forwards the request to the right IP address. And then the expectation is that there's some sort of server software running on the computer at that IP address. Okay, that's gonna sit there and process that request and send a response. That is a web server. It gets a bit more complicated than that because you start talking about like reverse proxies and you know basically that kind of redirect to other mini servers on the same server. It, it, it can get, and then load balancing and it gets more complicated in practice, but that's the general idea. So Apache is pretty much a ubiqu ubiquitous with the way many web servers around uh, the internet work. Uh, basically a very popular stack of technologies that are used to do um, basically websites is what's called LAMP, it stands for Linux. So basically what you do is you have, you spin up like a Linux computer, you install Apache on it, that's the A, uh, as a web server. Then you install MySQL as the database, the M, and then you use PHP to actually create the application because you know, um, in the early days of a lot of PHP development, you didn't write your own server. You would just, PHP would just be naturally be able to interact with the Apache server. There's just sort of like a, um, they're built to interact with each other. Okay, uh, the, the actual more nuts and bolts of that part I'm not as familiar with. Um, nowadays, you, you can build your own web server directly in PHP. Um, you know, there's frameworks like Laravel that kind of, you know, will let you handle a lot of that and allow you to do things like, creating different like URLs and what happens when those URLs are requested and things like that. Okay, so, but that's the initial project. And again, the point is that this Apache project was an open source project and there was an importance of trying to kind of keep it free from influences because everybody in this group of people were using this and the last thing you want to do is like this, this, this code suddenly gets controlled by some sort of large commercial entity that says, hey, you know what, I want to make money off of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it up. So that way people have to pay me to use it, changing sort of like, you know, basically locking away this thing that everyone's kind of using as a standard. So they create a, a legal entity to kind of house ownership of this project. Okay, so it's not now, that means that not only doesn't necessarily own the code, the code is open source. So there's essentially a license to, and one type of license, and a license just means like, hey, what are the levels of permission? Like, hey, this stuff is freely available, but what can you actually do with it for free? So a license determines whether, you know, you could actually go build a business with this free thing, or, you know, or do you have to, whether you have to kind of give credit that you're using it, um, whether you cannot make money off using it, you can't create a business around it. Like you can use it in your business for your business's tech stack, but you cannot use it to create a business providing a, this thing as a service. All that's kind of dictated in a license. So there's the open source license. Okay, so you'll hear a lot of things are Apache licensed. 
That doesn't necessarily mean they are a Apache project, okay? Apache license just means, hey, people can freely use this code. It's a fairly hands-off license. Like, there's very little things you cannot do. And there's a lot of other, there's like MIT license, there's a whole bunch of different licenses out there, and I'm not an expert on sort of what each one lets you do and cannot do. But basically, the role of the Apache Foundation was to not was mainly to own the copyright, so like a copyright and trademark over the name Apache, and basically, basically uh, hold those assets in this non-commercial, non-profit entity that's kind of controlled by a lot of people. So that way, no one can no one can just turn around and secretly go sell it and lock away this code. Over time, the Apache Software Foundation grew to begin taking on other projects. So basically other open source projects kind of ran into the same problems. It's like, okay, hey, you know, this is a thing that a lot of companies depend on and we don't want to run the risk that it becomes sort of commercially trapped. So we need somewhere we can put it that is safe. And that is the Apache Software Foundation. And so essentially when a, a project, an open source project, basically they will get that kind of support from the Apache Software Foundation if they become what's called the Apache top level project. Okay, so essentially the process as it goes is you have an open source project, um, then you have to have sort of, again, it can't just be from one company, okay, because the idea is that these are not commercially run projects, because there's commercially run open source projects where basically a commercial company writes the code and makes it open source available, but at the end of the day, they, again, they can always change that at any time, they can change the rules at any time, which is fine for certain things, but oftentimes when it's something that's supposed to be like a standard like a sort of like a, 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 a linchpin of the industry, you, you don't want it to be sort of locked up. So um, a lot of projects will apply to become an Apache project. And the first step is to become what's called an incubating project. Okay. And as an incubating project, the idea is they have like, you know, around, let's say like six months to basically meet all the, all the expectations of the Apache foundation board, which has to do with making sure that, Hey, you have, you know, active, uh, development from mul from basically people from multiple companies uh, or multiple interests. So the idea is you have, di it's all about diversity. The idea is like, hey, the people who sit on the board, which is referred to as the, um, I forget what the P stands for, but the uh, pro it's project, um, uh, pro uh, project management committee. Yeah, pro uh, P the PMC is what it's usually referred to and they have to be from different companies. They can, you can have multiple people from the same company, but the idea is there can't be like a concentration. Like there can't be like, hey, half, more than half of the people on this board are from the same company, in which case they pretty much have full control in the same way if you have half, more than half of the board's 51% of the board seats in a corporation, a public corporation, you essentially control it. Um, basically all the trademarks are then get housed by Apache, the project, can basically kind of have control over that trade, the usage of that trademark, but also does the Apache Foundation have rules over it? Uh, so, um, like for example, recently I created icebergcommunity.com mainly to help foster the Apache Iceberg uh, open source community. So basically, make it a place where people can kind of list their different Apache Iceberg uh, outlets and basically allow people can find their local meetups, stuff like that. I had to I had to go ask be like hey like I created this I read your trademark rules there's like a whole page saying okay here's the rules regarding using Apache trademark terms like Apache or or iceberg um, and then you have to like submit an email request saying okay hey, here's the thing I'm doing here's how I'm following the rules and then they kind of get back to you whether with yay or nay and any other sort of adjustments you need to make so. Um, again, the reason being is that there, it's very, very much, they don't want you using the trademarks to, to, to com promote a commercial entity. Okay. So the idea is like, you can have events, you can have websites, you can, you can promote this project, but you cannot do it in a way that sort of like tricks people to going into sort of like a, a trap for a commercial entity. So like, this is why you see like a lot of people who create like commercial events or commercial marketing around Apache Iceberg, they don't use the word Apache Iceberg. They usually use some sort of other name. Um, you know, I won't give any specific examples, but that's generally why. It's again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, that's sort of like, you know, there's this line where if you get too commercial in your usage of Apache, of Apache trademarks, uh, you'll get a knock on your door. <laughs> you know, and usually, I'm, I'm sure it's usually a friendly knock. Um, 
but that's the role of the idea. But the idea is Apache takes the independence of these projects very seriously. And this is important because that means if you are a company and you're looking for technologies to build your, your, your internal platforms on with the eye of, you know, having not getting locked into some sort of, you know, commercial relationship down the road, um, when you see Apache in front of a particular open source project's name, it gives you a sort of sense of certainty of the independence of that project and the ongoing because that project won't have Apache in front of it if it's not actively being developed and it's not actively being developed by a diverse community. Now, Apache is not the only open source foundation. There's also the Linux Foundation, uh, which also does very similar services. Um, I think it also even like will provide financial assistance and other types of assistance to open source projects. It doesn't have the same sort of diversity requirements. Like it's like I would say, like for my impression, is that the Linux Foundation's goals are slightly different. It's not so much like focus on independence of projects, but more than focusing on fostering the project. So it still will house the trademarks and stuff like that, but it's more about taking like cool open source projects and helping them and giving them guidance on how to move forward more than saying, hey, you have to be sort of completely free of any commercial entanglements. Okay, and this is why you see uh, pro open source projects like Delta Lake housing the Linux Foundation versus Apache, uh, because there, again, there are some shades of gray in sort of like the kind of influence uh, a company like Databricks, who has a lot of control over the, the, the Delta Lake project for how much sort of they would have to kind of give up in order to kind of get that, that Apache label. Um, so hopefully this helps you understand sort of like what is the Apache Foundation and why does that matter? Um, it's a pretty cool. There's actually a really cool documentary on YouTube about the Apache Foundation that kind of goes through their whole history and, and interviews a lot of the, the founding members that, that created like that original Apache software. Um, it's pretty fascinating, I think, and there's a lot of really cool projects in it. Um, again, there, there can be multiple projects that even projects that compete against each other in there. All it cares about is again, it's like actively developed in that independent that whole nature of independence. Um, and then you know you, you you go through the process, you can become an Apache foundation project, uh, which again, gives, it's, it's definitely a, a, a certain, gives you a certain level of prestige and gives a certain level of certainty to people who are contemplating which tools to use when building their, uh, their different platforms and whatnot. So yeah, my name is Alex. Uh, tell, tell your friends about the podcast, uh, share this with them and have a great day and enjoy.